Hi folks, Larry Puckett, the DCC guy, and today I want to go over some more settings for Decoder Pro. But before we get into that, I want to show you how to find uh, the COM port setting for the uh, for the default interface that uh, that you've installed uh, on your computer to interface with your command station uh, and do your programming, or if you're using a standalone programmer, just to do that as well. So the first thing you want to do is go over here and click on Control Panel. And in your system, I've got it pinned to my uh, uh, dash uh, to the window here, but uh, to the desktop. But it, it's available under System Settings if that helps you. Um, when we go in here, we're going to want to look under System and Security, and then go down to the Device Manager under System. Okay, when the Device Manager comes up, it's going to be populated with all kinds of settings that you don't need to worry about. Uh, the thing we're looking for is here the ports. So COM ports and line printer ports. You notice I've only got one port assigned here. It's COM12. Click on it, open it, and what comes up? It's a Digitrex driver. Um, you can see that. You can see that it um, is assigned to COM12. If we look at the port settings, you can see it's set for 9600 baud. And the driver information, it dates from November of 2007. Uh, I need to check and see if that's up to date. They might have a newer one and I might need to update that driver. So I'll need to look into that in the future. Um, nothing really here to worry about. Okay, so once you know what the COM port is, then commit that to memory. COM port 12 is where the Digitrax PR3 is assigned. Now, if we then close this and get back to Decoder Pro. If you remember the other day, I showed you how to set the preferences up for a Digitrax PR3. So if we go into Preferences, okay, and click on Connections, we can set it up for Digitrax again. Here, okay, Loconet PR3, Serial Port, COM12. Okay, I showed you how to find that. We can use it as a standalone program. In this case, though, it's hooked up to the DCS240. So that's all it is for the Locon, for the Digitrex interface. But what about some of these others? Some of the people um, uh, viewing the uh, viewing the videos the other day asked me, but what about you know North Coast Engineering, MRC? What about some of these other systems? Okay, let's look at it. This is the only thing that's different. Okay. You click on it, go to MRC, bingo. Serial connection or a simulator. I'm going to click on serial. The serial port, obviously none is selected because I don't have an MRC interface hooked up to it. But you could enter it here just like we did for COM12 for the Digitrax. Cab address, you need to know the cab address that is assigned uh, to the interface uh, for MRC, and it tells you that in its literature somewhere. I've run across this before and I just don't remember what it is. And then the various names. There are no additional settings as I've remembered to be set for MRC. You can do the same thing. We can look at uh, North Coast, NCE. Same thing. Pick, this, pick whichever one you want. You can use the simulator. You can use the NCE USB port uh, connection, connection or interface. Uh, once you know that, the serial port, you can make that connection. I have a power cab, so it's hooked up to that, but other options, Power Pro, uh, Smart Booster 3, Smart Booster 5, the NCE Twin. So pick the one that, uh, that is appropriate for your um, system. And there you are. You can see also, I think 9600 baud is the default setting on this one. There's one other option, uh, 19,200. So you need to know what you've got your USB set for. Um, and that, that is, you have to set that up on the board itself. And you'll need to do, it comes with that literature. Okay, once that's done, that's all there is to it. As far as these others, you can see the defaults, same type of stuff as I showed you in the Digitrack setup. File location, same information. All of these, it's all the same stuff. Okay, so when you're setting up the preferences, 
all you really do is decide which command, uh, DCC system you're using and the COM port for the interface and any specific settings for that interface that, that you have gotten out of the uh, information that came with it. So it's very, very straightforward as far as that goes. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cancel that out. Um, at this point, uh, I want to just run across a few things here on the on the main screen uh, of, about Decoder Pro. You notice that we have the programming mode option. We've got paged, direct byte, register, and address. Uh, typically, page mode was commonly used oh, 10 years or so ago, and before that, uh, there are a lot of decoders, of course, floating around that are dependent on paged mode. And it's just a different way of reading CVs and writing CVs. It reads a number of them, called a page, all at the same time, and it writes them that way. If we look at direct byte, that means it will go directly to the CV that uh, you're working with, or number of CVs, and change just or read just those particular CVs. So this is the uh, typical um, uh, programming mode that is used in modern decoders. Uh, it's faster because it's only reading one CV as opposed to a whole page of CVs. Um, register mode. Register is a very old mode, um, similar to direct byte, but it's, it's just not used anymore. And address mode allows you to send uh, programming commands just to uh, a particular locomotive or decoder address. So the one you're going to be using most probably is direct byte. If you ever get in a situation where you're trying to read or write to a decoder and it's not working with page mode, then switch to direct byte and vice versa. You might find that uh, you have an old decoder that needs page mode. Uh, it's an easy clickable option to switch between them here. Another thing that's very useful here is um, a, a new loco option. So all you have to do is have a decoder on the track or set it up. Uh, you can click on new loco and you can create a new loco in your roster. Down here you can select whether you're going to be sending information to a programming track, whether you're going to be programming on the main to a specific address, or whether you just want to open up a locomotive roster entry and uh, edit it only and not try programming at all. Um, you can do a lot, make a lot of changes and then and go into programming mode later and just read them all out uh, and write them to that decoder. For these other things, this can open up a virtual throttle that can allow you to control uh, a locomotive that you might have just finished programming and you can test some of those settings using the throttle. Um, okay, we're getting up uh, kind of a long video here, so I'm going to break off now and uh, at a later date we will get back in here and uh, take a look at some of these individual menu options along the top here. So that's all for now. Uh, come on back and take another look as we go through all of these different settings uh, for the program as we prepare to begin using uh, the program to do some programming itself.